So remember that when you first um, when you first try to start dissecting, it's covered by a lot of fat. Okay, so basically we took off a lot of fat. And this one has all the fat removed. So this white part, which we would call the white of the eye, is the sclera. Okay? And this part right here is the cornea. It's the cornea. Together, the sclera and the cornea make up the fibrous tunic. Remember, the eye has three tunics. So sclera and cornea. If you make a cut around here, make a little cut around here, and that's called the limbus, but you don't have to know that, I'm just telling you. Make a cut around this area, and you reflect back the cornea like that. As soon as you do that, the aqueous humor is going to come rushing out. Okay, the aqueous humor is, of course, gone because it's already been cut through, but that's what would happen when you cut around there. The aqueous humor is going to come rushing out. And remember, the aqueous humor is made by the ciliary processes, which are part of the ciliary body, and they're drained by the canal of Schlem. And if you, have a, if you don't have enough drainage, oops, if you don't have enough drainage of the aqueous humor, you get glaucoma. And, oops, it's not staying back stay back. There we go. This part here surrounding the pupil is the iris. Okay. The iris is a ring of smooth muscle and it has parasympathetic and sympathetic innervation. And when there's too much light it constricts and when there's not enough light it dilates. And the dilation is sympathetic, right? You can imagine if you were hunting at night, right? And, okay, now let's say that you're at night in a dark desert and a lion is chasing you. Then your sympathetic nervous system is going to activate fight or flight, and because it's dark, you want to let as much light in as possible. So sympathetic nervous system is going to make it dilate to let more light in. And then parasympathetic nervous system, which is mainly rest and digest, is going to make this um, constrict. So this is the pupil. The pupil is just the hole, right, in the middle of the iris, okay? And then right behind there, you have your lens. And we might have lost our lens in this one. No, it's still there. The lens has fallen down into the vitreous humor. That's the lens, okay. Remember that the lens is, is um, held by suspensory ligaments from the ciliary body, and these either relax or they tug on the lens. Okay, this is the lens. This whole black part here, this is part of the ciliary body. Okay. And so let's take out our Let's take out our lens for a second. And you can see that the gelatinous substance that's attached to the lens is the vitreous humor. Okay? And the vitreous humor fills this whole posterior part of the eye. So, remember the retina has two layers, okay? A neural layer and a pigmented layer. This layer that we're kind of scraping, this is the neural layer. And this is the layer that contains all the photoreceptors, the rods and the cones. So, the rods and the cones, which you probably will find out in your lecture class, synapse with these ganglion cells. And then all the ganglion cells, you don't need to know that level of detail, but the ganglion cells are going to all leave the eye here. This is the optic disc, and it's where these neurons are leaving the eye, and they're going into the optic nerve, which is behind here. That's why the optic disc is also called the blind spot. Okay. So if you wanted to kind of find the optic disc, you could try to scrape away this neural layer. And the place where it won't scrape away, which is right here, is where your optic disc is. Because all of the neurons have to go through there into your optic nerve. Then if you keep going, you have your tapetum. That's the blue part, right? Right, the, ir the iridescent part, the tapetum. And this is analogous to our choroid, okay? And we don't have a tapetum. Tapetum is something that's in animals that live in dim environments, like sheep. And then behind this guy, you would have your pigmented layer of the retina. That's a pigmented choroid coat? Yes, this is their pigmented choroid coat. Okay. Right. So it's the darker part of the blue, right? Right. Okay. Now this whole iridescent part is the tapetum. Okay. And then the part on the other half is? Is the pigmented choroid coat. Right. And then behind that, you would have your, your pigmented part of your retina. So that's the eye, mm -hmm. and I believe that's all you need. Yeah, that's all you need.